Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we continue on our series of basically decks. These are, again, the decks that will not require you to have used a single rare or mythic. That's right. You can play these on an ultra budget, and they're still super fun and awesome for you to play with. Also, real quick side note, I do want to say one more time, thank you so much to everybody right now. We have hit 1,000 and plus subscribers on this channel, and we're hoping to keep growing throughout 2024. So one more time, thank you so much, everybody. Let's make sure this channel keeps burning bright into the rest of the year. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and play today's deck that I'm calling basically spells. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Whether you're new to the channel or a longtime viewer, as always, we have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So, our Is It Spells deck today is looking at an average mana curve of about 1.7. That means we are, of course, rocking blue and red, and we're looking at a nice clean slate of only 20 creatures, 20 instants, and 20 lands. So as the name implies, we're mostly just going to be a spell slinger deck. All we just need to do is get a couple of creatures on the battlefield and then save up a bunch of spells, which we can cast off to pump up our creatures to do a massive swing against our opponent and get to victory. Now, in order for us to do that, however, let's go ahead and talk about the creatures first that we're going to try to make sure that they get some pump. So with that, our two main creatures in the one drop slot are going to be Monastery Swift Spear, which has haste and prowess. It pumps itself up anytime we cast a non-creature spell, an extra plus one plus one until end of turn. And Symmetry Sage here, not the alchemy version, mind you. So this is the actual Actually the regular card variant, which has Magecraft. So in other words, whenever you cast a copy, an instant, or sorcery, the target creature you control has base power 2 until end of turn. Not as major as a pump as, say, the Swift Spear on its own, but it can still do a little extra damage with even a single spell. Now, in the 2-drop slot, we're going to be utilizing Electrostatic Infantry and Balmore Battle Mage Captain. Both of these cards also do the same thing, where anytime we do some spell slinging, so in the case of Electrostatic Infantry here, this 1-2 Dwarf Wizard with Trample allows itself to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. In other words, this means that its pump will be permanent and means that we can definitely power this up throughout the course of the game. And the other card, of course, as I just mentioned, Balmore Battle Mage Captain. This is an awesome card, and it's actually one of my favorite cards that came from the Dominaria United set. This legendary Bird Wizard is a 1-3 with flying that reads, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, creatures you control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain trample until end of turn. In other words, this card can be an amazing, super cool finisher for the deck and is hilarious when it goes off. Sometimes you only need one or two spells with Balmore out to get to victory. And our final creature in the 3-drop slot is actually one that some people actually kind of forget a little bit. This is Frolicking Familiar, a 3-mana 2-2 two -two Otter Wizard, so whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, Frolicking Familiar gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Similar, to, of course, to the Monastery Swiss Spear, but the biggest difference, however, it has an adventure ability on it, so for one mana, you can ping someone and do one point of damage to any target. So, this is kind of a two for one, which is great for our deck, because that's definitely what we want to have. Now, what exactly are the spells we're going to be slinging at our opponents? Good question! Well, I'm glad you asked. So, mostly it's going to be all instants. We are not going to worry about any of the sorceries, because we can want to just try to see if we can do some last minute pump as we then swing for damage. So, for the one drop, we have Consider here to surveil and draw a card. We have Monstrous Rage. This is an amazingly powerful card that can pump up any one of our creatures, give them a monster roll token so they have a semi-permanent pump and trample to ensure we can push through damage to against our opponent. We have Play With Fire here. It's basically just shock on a stick. As again, we could just do two damage anywhere, but if we go to face, we could scry one, which can be really good for us if we just need to fix our next draw. In the two drop slot, we actually thought about using Lightning Strike here, but honestly, I think Cathartic Pyre, based on the current format, is actually a much better option for us. Yes, it can't go to face, but being able to deal still three damage to a creature or planeswalker can sometimes be very helpful against us. And also, this gives us great flexibility because sometimes you might end up with hands where you might get a little bit flooded or have too many creatures creatures, so it's great to be able to flex this where you can discard some cards and then draw those cards to make sure you have what you need exactly when you need it. And then finally, in the 3-drop slot, although technically you can actually cast this for 1 mana, the one and only Wizard's Lightning, so it'll cost 2 less to cast if you control a Wizard. You'll notice that, of course, we have all Wizards in the deck, with the exception, of course, of Monastery Swift Spear, but this is otherwise still a safe bet for us to ensure that we can do some great damage for only a single point of mana. Now, as far as your mana base is concerned, again, this is going to be one of our simple decks out there. We're not going to go super crazy, and again, we want to make this as super budget and easy to understand as possible. So we only need six islands, ten mountains, and we'll have four tap lands, swift water cliffs. And with that, let's go ahead and let's talk about a couple of tips that I want to give you for the deck. One of the biggest advantages that you have with this deck is you can do some massive swings and sometimes come out of nowhere to beat down your opponent, even if sometimes they have full 20 life. But the only way you're going to do that is you only really need one or two creatures out and then save up your spells so that way you can just sling them off sometimes 
in one massive turn. So that way, sometimes you can close out the game in one or even two turns, depending on what your opponent is playing. It is sometimes a little greedy if you want to go wide with your deck, if you have a ton of creatures, but be very careful with that. You always have to assume your opponent will have spot removal or depending on what they're playing, assume they're going to have a wrath. So that's why I only recommend one or two creatures out and then just start spell slinging every so often to put the pressure on your opponent. Remember that cards like Electrostatic Infantry, their pump is actually going to be permanent. So with those counters on it, you actually don't have to swing immediately. Sometimes you might just do that just to keep a good blocker up. On the other hand, some of the times you're going to have to be super aggro. So with Dalmor or Monastery Swift Spear, you're going to have to want to ensure that you can get trample on your creatures to push the remaining points of damage. And the other small thing is don't underestimate Symmetry Sage. Even though its ability only gives our creature a pace power of two, remember that aside from just the Frolicking Familiar, all of your other creatures only have a base power of one. So sometimes that one extra point of damage can mean the difference between getting a victory when you swing or end up losing against your opponent on the backswing. Keep in mind that the biggest weakness to the deck is you're going to have a hard time if your opponent ha does have a lot of removal, but that's also why I mentioned at the very beginning to only use one or two creatures at a time. However, there are some matchups that you might end up having a bad time because your opponent just keeps removing everything. And if they do have counter spells or if they do have maybe say duresses or thought ceases against you, you're definitely going to have a bad time because they will strip away the key cards that you're going to need in order to get to your victory. Now, having said all that, even if you are still interested in the deck, despite some of the shortcomings this deck may even have, I'm definitely going to recommend for you. It is really fun. And here are going to be some recommendations in terms of upgrades for it. So obviously we're not going to go over uh, any sideboards, or anything, because whenever we do these kinds of deck techs, there's super simple and I only want to focus on best of one. However, if you are interested in upgrading, maybe to start throwing in a couple of rares, maybe you are interested in this archetype, as always, just like my other videos, I will leave on screen right now, as you can see, some of the previous deck techs we've done, which actually do invest a little bit into some rares and mythics to make sure the deck does have a lot more power going for it. And of course, there are all kinds of variants that you can play across other formats besides the Explorer version we talked about today. So there's versions we can do in Historic, there's versions you can even do in Timeless if you really want to go all out with the deck. When it comes to these colors, this is definitely why I love these colors so much is because you have so many ways of mixing and matching where you can go super wide maybe with token strategies maybe you want to just go super tall and super big with one of your creatures just go ahead and mix and match and definitely what you see on screen right now will be some great options that I can recommend for you if you are fascinated by this style of gameplay and with that, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck. Overall, as always, I'm a big fan of Mono Red, and I'm also a big fan of Spell Slinging, so is it is kind of, I guess, my personal choice of colors if you were to ask me what two colors I like together. So this deck was a very fun and natural build for me to show off for today. However, for those of you out there that are a fan of either or, as you just saw right now, there's a ton of ways you can kind of go off when it comes to these kinds of decks. You can go all out with the Spell Slinging, you can do a little bit more with the Prowess style, you can go wide, you can go big, Big, the possibilities for is it are endless and it's again why it's my favorite set of colors and my favorite guild in magic but otherwise if you are a fan of spell slinging with burn spells if you're a fan of wizards and maybe you like a bit of that tribal feeling to it if you're a fan of just trying to just go huge or go wide and just smash through your opponent out of nowhere with one big spell slinging turn definitely give this deck a try and I assure you when you manage to get those wins out of nowhere against your opponents you will have a lot of fun doing so and you'll definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life always be sure to burn bright. Later!